imagine a better world where a world where every single person is equal wait a sec what is this let me zoom out huh okay okay wait 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 uh, let's just erase this it looks like whoever wrote this couldn't possibly be me intended for there to be some symmetry what does symmetry mean wait a second wait a second let me try something first okay copy paste obviously the points align right now don't they but what if we wait a second oh well that's probably because the ends don't line up but that is that is strange that is strange that is strange that is strange but what does this mean well that means that over here we have horizontal symmetry what is symmetry well, to explain, let me take a star as an example. So we're going to do this the good old-fashioned way. Yeah, that should be good. Uh, boop. Uh, boop. Uh, boop. Uh, boop. And finally... We have a semi-perfect star. So now let's draw a line through the middle. Uh, okay. So um, it's a bit of a thin line, so let's draw a thicker one. You see this? It goes straight through. But what's more important is this. To make this easier, let's use a dotted line. So obviously it goes through. But, hmm, I kind of start to see something. Do you not see that both of these sides are the same? And that one is just a reflected image of the other? Hmm, that's interesting. But wait, there's more. And I'll show you what more there is at the end of the episode. But for now, let's keep this star around, living in its peace. Because, I mean, we don't want to disturb the star, do we? I mean, look at how happy it is right now. Alright, so now, what is horizontal and vertical symmetry? Well, we'll explore that now. Let's say we have... A rectangle. Well, is it horizontally symmetrical? To be horizontally symmetrical means that there's a line that we can use to bisect whatever we have on the table, and that uh, bisector line, uh, the two pieces that are apart are congruent to each other. So, for example, no, I'm not going to use the stars as an example again. So, if we take this, then it's going to be at least, no, then it's going to at least be semi-congruent to the top side. Yeah, it's not congruent because I'm not Picasso. But now, consider this. We make a circle. Dude, why does it have to be black? Why? And we're just going to uh, make it a red circle. Good. So now, what happens when I take it and draw a line through it? Well, uh, now the circle is cut into two perfect halves that are congruent to each other. We call these semicircles. So these two are congruent to each other. But let me give you an example of something that might not be symmetrical. Let's say we have this. So 
Is it vertically symmetrical? Uh, is it vertically symmetrical or horizontally symmetrical? Well, if we do horizontally, then we discover that this is in fact different. While this section is mostly triangular, this section is rectangular, meaning that these two are different and that thus this is not horizontally symmetrical. And let's emphasize one more time. Symmetry means that if you cut an object, so if you cut an object into two halves, those halves will be equal. So what about vertical symmetry? Well, we could try here, nope. Try here, nope. But if we try from the tip and go downwards, hmm, it seems that we do have two alike pieces. Now, I would need to, um, I would need to rotate this by some amount. I would need to mirror this image in order to actually get a good look at how they are um, identical, but these two are identical, just try them, okay? So they are vertically symmetrical. So to reveal, what is the difference between horizontally and vertically symmetrical? Well, let's take a few objects that will probably help us. Number one, hexagon. Number two, hmm, let's see. What can I do for number two? Oh, I know, triangle. And what should I do for number three? Hmm, so I need something that, okay. So what I can do for number three will be this. So, uh, and for number four, how do I find something that's only Hawaii? Uh, oh, I can't say that. I can't say that. Sorry, sorry. Um, hmm. Let's go with this. Yeah, yeah, that's better. So, let's try this now. So, Let's see, we're going to make a sort of table on our lineup. So we're going to ask, is it horizontally symmetrical? And is it vertically symmetrical? Okay, so first of all, let's see if our hexagon over here is horizontally symmetrical. So if we draw a line through it, it gives us two identical trapezoids, meaning that a regular hexagon is horizontally symmetrical. But what about vertically? Well, vertically, if we split it, it gives us these two weird looking shapes of a combination of a triangle and a rectangle. But still, these two are the same. They're just mirrored images of each other. So this is also vertically symmetrical. But what about the triangle? Well, if we try and do it horizontally, so if we try and bisect this, no. This does not look horizontally symmetrical because there's a triangle on top and a trapezoid on the bottom. And no matter where you put your horizontal line, there will never be any symmetry between the two sides. It's just a growing triangle and a shrinking trapezoid as you go down and down. So there is no horizontal symmetry over here. What about vertically though? Well, 
if we go straight through the middle, we can see that it forms two right triangles that are, in fact, congruent. So the regular triangle, the equilateral at least, is vertically symmetrical. Now what is that? What is that? So, looks like some Mickey Mouse you're stuck onto a weird looking square or rectangle. So first of all, we have to see if it's horizontally symmetrical. So if we draw a line, we're going to see if we can get two identical halves. Uh, no, no. Going through the circle leaves us with this monstrosity down here. No, because we still have the square in the other circle. No, no, no. There is no horizontal symmetry here. Because if we draw a horizontal line anywhere that intersects the shape, it will never cut this shape into two halves that are identical. Now, what about vertically? Well, let's try it. No, no. No, no. Okay. So it's not vertically symmetrical either. Probably because it's a really strange shape. But now we have this. A rotated isosceles. So, if we draw a horizontal line through it, it definitely does have horizontal symmetry over there in the middle. But, it does not have vertical symmetry either. Because, just like this one, it's a growing uh, uh, triangle and a shrinking trapezoid as you go from right to left. So, nope. So, we finally reviewed that. Just one more thing to go. I promise, I promise, I'm sorry. So, n over 8. What does that mean? Well, let's take our hexagon again. So, let's take any sort of regular polygon. For example, what if we took our star friend from earlier? Oh damn, he doesn't want to be taken. Damn! Okay, so we have silenced him. So now we're going to use him for an experiment. So if we clone him, then what happens if we spin him? Just by, uh, let's see, 18 degrees. No, no, not 18 degrees. 54, let's say. Or 72, I think that's what we did. Uh, what's 360 over 5 again? Yeah, 72. So we rotated him by 72 degrees, and now he's almost identical, or at least his clone is. So now let's rotate at 144 degrees. Almost identical again. Now, let's rotate it by 216 degrees, almost identical again. And now, rotating it 288 degrees, it's nearly identical again. And then, finally, back to its original. So, that means that there are five points where uh, we can rotate this uh, uh, star and it will be identical to the preeminent. So that would be 72, 144. Uh, there's also uh, 216, 288. And finally, uh, what would be 28 plus 7? Uh, sorry kind of having, yeah, that would be 360. Okay, so that means that there are these are our five points. So what does N mean? Well, it basically means that the sum of the angles divided by eight in a polygon is equal to how many points of symmetry it has, like these 
points of symmetry. For example, the star has five. So, how much is in a star? Well, a regular star. Well, we can measure that with a pentagon and some isosceles triangles. So, uh, what is the regular thing for a pentagon again? Well, if we go back to our previous lesson, we know that we have 540 over 5, which should be, if I am correct, 108. So, we have 108, 108, 108, 108, 108. And now, these two are obviously going to be uh, supplementary. So that gives us uh, 72, 72. And this is also going to be 72. And then this must be, uh, sorry for all of the calculations in the way, I'm just really curious. So 72, 72, 36, and we keep doing this over and over, which is quite boring, but eventually going to be finished. So what? So that's it. So now, essentially, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 angles inside a star, probably because it has like 10 sides. But anyway, adding, so adding up these angles gives us, uh, yeah, you know what, I gotta use the calculator for this one, sorry. All right, so we have, uh, let's see, on 36 plus, okay, sorry. Uh, 36 plus 36 plus uh, 36 plus 36 plus 36. A smarter way to do this probably be 36 times 5, but I don't know. 72 and 72 make 144. 108 and 144 make uh, 252. So, God. Why do you have to keep turning off? 252, 252, 252, 252, 252. That gives us 1440 over 8. Way too much effort to get minimal reward. But anyway, dividing that by 8 gives us 180. So there are simply, this is simply a formula for every single regular polygon, sorry, the star, not a regular polygon. So if we take, for example, 108 over 8 or something like that. So for symmetry in review, regular polygons have many different points of symmetry. So for example, if we turn this polygon, this pentagon, has five points of symmetry, so if we rotate it zero degrees, if we rotate it, so we can rotate it zero degrees, we can also rotate it this much, and it will also be identical. So there are five points of symmetry for this pentagon. There are five points of symmetry for this star. There are six points of symmetry for this hexagon, three for this triangle, none for this thing, three for this triangle, and so on and so on. So that is symmetry in regular polygons. This looks really ugly. So thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you next time on geometry. Bye.